Consolidation's Comprehensive Problem Part 1. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. And this is a problem that I'm in the process of setting up for a student. And I'd like to do this in pieces because the problem the student was given is a comprehensive problem that covers most of the issues in consolidations. Again, the reason we consolidate is to put together, in this case, a parent company who has bought 80% of a subsidiary. So Acme, a parent, buys 80% of a company called XYZ. And the purpose of consolidations is to show both entities in the same set of financial statements. We consolidate the financial statements, show them the two companies together. So in this case, this section of the question is going to calculate a differential. So the way this question runs is XYZ has 100 share, 100,000 shares of common stock and the market price one week after acquisition is $39.50. So if we multiply those two numbers together, we get a value, a market value of $39.57. And what I've written next to that is <clears throat> an A because we're going to have we're going to use this in a calculation here in a minute. Now, this ca this differential calculation is a little bit different from what you've seen in my other videos. Acme pays this amount 32 3237600 for 80% of XYZ company. That's how much Acme pays. What does Acme buy? They buy the equity section of the balance sheet, you can think of it, in some cases, it's described as the net book value. In other cases, it's described as just book value. The point is it's assets minus liabilities or just the equity section. A challenge is that there's many different ways for the same to describe the same thing. You are buying the equity section of the balance sheet. In this case, common stock balance, retained earnings balance. We add the two up and we find out that the equity section in blue, summation is 31, $3,150,000. The difference between the value of the common stock in blue and the equity section in green is the differential, which I've listed in red. Now, as you've seen on prior videos, the differential <clears throat> is allocated between two different sources when you actually post journal entries in consolidation. The first is... We post some of the differential to the fair market value of the assets that are greater than the book value, which is $89,000. And we're going to see how we calculated that below. I don't want to introduce it yet because it's a little complex. And the difference between the entire differential in red and the amount of the differential that we assign to the fair market value of the assets greater than book value in green, that difference is goodwill. Now, I had a problem with, I'm going to hit return, I had a problem with this question in that my calculation of goodwill was a little bit different than the, the amount that they had in the document that they sent me at 720000 So I'm going to use 720000 in the problem so that everything connects and not try to change the entire problem. So again, the differential exists because the fair market value of the company, which we can measure as shares times market price here, is different from the amount that was paid for the equity section of the balance sheet. Now, on my other videos, when we are not given a market price for the company, we have to calculate the market value of the company by taking the amount paid by Acme and dividing by 80% to get the market value. For example, if I take the amount paid by Acme and I divide it by 0.8, the 80% they purchased, I get, take a minute to come up here, 4,047,000. That is a different number than this number. But because we are given the market price of the stock and the number of shares, we can calculate specifically the market value and we don't need to do that calculation to estimate a market value. So that's different from the other differential videos you're going to find on my site. So that being said, <clears throat> let's talk about that fair market value, book value, etc. So below here I, I have laid out 
here are some assets. Here are the fair value of those assets, the book value of those assets. And I've subtracted the two to come up with book value greater than fair value. Now, in some cases, it's a positive number. Inventory is, has a fair value that's $50,000 higher than book value. For equipment, it's a negative. But in total, if I sum up all the differences, it's a positive number, $89,000, which we used above, and we assigned our differential to the fair market value of the assets. Again, as I mentioned before in videos, the differential is a temporary account which gets eliminated in consolidation. We do some we do some other calculations of goodwill and impairment, which is probably the last part I'm going to cover on this video. We're given in the question, the equipment has a useful life, the building has a useful life. We're given some detail about a bond that's outstanding, and we're given some detail about land. We're going to see it more in detail later. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, we have to do something with the fair market value differential. I'm going to skip the goodwill impairment because we need to do this part first. And I'm also going to note that for this analysis, all the differentials are shown as positive numbers. Now, you can see that some of the differentials are positive and some are negative. When I go back up to here, some of the differentials are positive, some are negative between fair value and book value. Differences, I should say, not differential. But to do the calculations, we're going to list them all as positive numbers. So at acquisition, here are the amounts, fair market value minus book value, all shown as positive numbers. The purchase happened on 1-1-2010. And so what we need to do is to amortize that fair market value differential. And this column does it from 1-1-2010 to 12-31-2012. The question is, how do we do it? Well, we had a $50,000 balance in inventory, and we have to assume, and this is common, that the inventory containing that fair market value differential was sold in the first year after acquisition, which would be the full year 2010, so the inventory goes away, fully amortized. With the equipment, we take the differential of 110, we divide it by the useful life, 10 years, we come up with an annual amortization, 11000 And to come up with the period for 2010, 11, and 12, we multiply by 3. We get 33000 as the amortization there. Building, similar thing. Differential divided by useful life, we come up with an annual amortization amount. We multiply that by 3 years. And we get our amortization, three years of amortization of the building. Land doesn't amortize, so there's no impact there. We end up selling some of the land later. And the last thing I'll cover is the bomb, which is a little difficult. We have a par value bond, $450, the amount stated on the face of the certificate, remaining useful life, the annual interest which is 5% times the 450. I don't have it right here on the screen, it's up above. Now, to figure out the current value of a bond, it's, it's the, present val the present value of a bond, it's the present value of two cash flows. The flow of interest payments, we use the ordinary annuity present value table, and the lump sum, the principal amount we get at the end. So, if I take the annual interest times the present value of an ordinary annuity, because we get those payments every year, I get the present value of about 139000 If I take the present value of that lump sum that I get at the end of eight years, discounted at the 6% because the bond was issued at a discount, I get 282330 I add them up and I get the present value of the bond in blue at 1231 2012 422051. The question rounds it to 422, and I'm going to go with that number. So the remaining differential is the 450 par value 
compared with the uh, 422 present value, it's $28,000. What we actually post above is the coupon rate, and I need to correct that spelling, the coupon rate on the bond, the interest based on the coupon rate, I should say the 22.5 that I just mentioned above, based on 5% of the par, the present value of the bond at the market rate, which is discounted, it's the 422 present value times, if I go way up to the top, the 6%. So we're comparing cash I actually get in the door for interest of 22.5 versus the present value of the bond times the discounted rate of 6% and I get a difference of 28.20 and that 28.20 is my bond amortization right here. So what we have done here is taken the fair value differential for these assets and we have amortized from the time we bought, from the time the consolidation happened on 1 1 2010, and we've taken the amortization to the end of 2013. As we keep going on the question, you'll see that the, that the answers have to be generated in the financials as of 12 31 2013. So we end up with an unamortized balance of the fair value differential for these assets. Complicated, a lot going on, but we'll have several videos to cover all of this. Remember that at St. Louis Test Prep, stltest.net, we have our accounting video textbooks. Both for accounting for investments and advanced accounting are out there. I'm actually adding to the advanced accounting textbook with some of this new data. You get the video, the Excel templates, a practice exam in Excel and with answers explained in a video. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.